Hi everybody, today we want to have a look at vowel reduction. Now what exactly is vowel reduction? It is a common feature of spoken English and it really happens when a full vowel sound in a syllable or a word gets reduced to a schwa, a, or sometimes an i. If you don't remember what the schwa is, remember I have a full video dedicated to it. But here is a quick revision. What is the schwa again? It is the mid-central vowel sound. It sounds like this. Uh. And it is the most common sound in English. Apparently, 30% of what comes out of our mouth is the schwa when we speak. This is a little bit worrying. So 30% of what we say is just a. Uh. Here is an example. Banana. Banana. So the first A letter and the last A letter are both a schwa sound. B, na, n. Banana. Here are some more examples. For example, we have a couple of auxiliary verbs here have, the full form would be have, but when we speak at natural speed, there's some vowel reduction happening here and the a gets reduced to an u. Ho. Ho. Sometimes the h is even lost, so it's just of. And this is what we also call the weak form. Let's have a look at another example with the auxiliary verb do. Do. Long u also usually gets reduced to a schwa. De. De. Of course, this sounds a little bit strange on its own, but you have to remember that this only happens when we use these words in a sentence, in an utterance, and we speak and it's at normal speed. Was is another example from the auxiliary verb to be, was, with an o sound, but often this gets reduced to a schwa as well, was, was. And like I said, those um, forms with vowel reduction, we call them weak forms. So there is the full form when we say the word on its own, and then there's the weak form that we have within a sentence or a phrase when we speak naturally in connected speech. So here is another summary for you. What is a weak form? A weak form is an unstressed word with a reduced vowel sound, a schwa, and it is the result of natural connected speech in English. Why does all of this happen, you might wonder? Because this is quite specific here for English. You might come from a first language where that does not happen. So here is an explanation. English is a stress-timed language. What does that mean? That means that there is stress on words, lexical stress, and there's also stress on phrases or sentences, and we call this prosodic stress. Now, important words and syllables are stressed in English, usually because they carry important information, and others are not. Words that carry information are nouns, adjectives, adverbs, verbs, any words that are negative that change the meaning of a word. But other words, especially sort of grammar words, articles, prepositions, these are not usually stressed. Unstressed words and syllables often experience vowel reduction because we say them faster. And we say them faster because English is stress-timed. Now, this is a whole big concept on its own and would take a little bit too long to explain this in this video, but I have a special video dedicated to stress-timed languages and syllable-timed languages and what that really means and how they differ, so do please check it out. Here is an example. 
It was nice and warm, but not interesting. So the words in bold that are underlined are all the words that are stressed in the sentence. Nice, warm, not interesting. They carry the main meaning of the sentence. The other words are not stressed. It, was, and, but, because they don't really carry meaning. So in these words, we often experience vowel reduction. Here, the words affected are was, becoming was, and, being reduced to un, and but, being reduced to but. We might even lose the t here. All three words would have a schwa sound in connected speech. It's the sound, um, the letter that I put in orange. So listen very carefully. It was nice and warm, but not interesting. It was nice and warm, but not interesting. Now, what about full forms versus weak forms? What exactly is the difference and can we have both? Well, sometimes a word is stressed and pronounced in a full form, even a function word, and sometimes it is unstressed and turns into a weak form with often a schwa sound. Here's an example. Have a look at this sentence. He won a car and a house in the competition. So here we have the word and a function word, a linker, usually experiencing vowel reduction. But in this sentence, because we're so surprised that this guy won two things, a car and a house, we would stress and. And so here you would actually hear it in its full form. Listen again. He won a car and a house in the competition. You might lose the D at the end, but the the A letter, the A sound, would be in its full form because you stress the word. Here, however, in the next sentence, and is not really stressed, and so it would become an, a weak form. Jim and Liz are coming over for dinner later. Jim and Liz are coming over for dinner later. So Jim and Liz, and becomes an. And yes, we even lost the D at the end. That is called elision. If you'd like to find out more about elision, check out my video on assimilation, elision and intrusion. I will link to it in this video. Now, words affected by vowel reduction are usually function words, at, then, etc. Also auxiliary verbs in their different conjugations and forms. So remember, we only have three auxiliary verbs in English, and that is be, do, and have. And of course, um, there are a lot of different conjugations because they are irregular. And some of these forms will experience vowel reduction. Modal verbs like can and would often experience vowel reduction, and also articles like the or a. I hope you found this video on vowel reduction interesting. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any other videos on pronunciation.